Have you ever seen a disagreement turn into an argument and then quickly escalate into an actual fight? And before long, the cops have to be called to intervene with the fight. I mean, my guess is pretty much everyone has at some point in their life. And I want you to kind of, you know, remember in those times that you ask yourself the question, what has gotten into these people, right? And, and that's the thought I want you to hold on to as we go into what we're looking towards today, and that is how Jesus rescues us from unclean spirits. How Jesus rescues us from unclean spirits. So in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 27, we read, All were amazed and asked one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. Well, as I thought about this reading, I began asking the question, what are some of the unclean spirits we deal with today? And for the sake of this question, I wasn't specifically meaning possession by supernatural beings, uh, but instead, I want to kind of look at some of the more common unclean spirits and things that we deal with in our cultural context. So how about the unclean spirit of physical and mental addiction? Addiction can be an unclean spirit, right? And this could be an addiction to alcohol, to drugs, to gambling, to social media, uh, to prescription drugs even, right? Did you know that according to the National Center for Drug Abuse Statistics, that four out of five pharmacy-filled prescriptions contain some kind of opioid? That statistic blew my mind. And of that, 12% of those who are prescribed those drugs are actually addicted to them. Even to prescribed medication. Also, did you know that using social media can lead to actual physical and psychological addiction because it triggers the brain's reward system to release dopamine as we sit there and scroll, scroll, scroll. And that might as well be me on the couch with my phone <laughs> doing social media, like, you know, for an hour at a time or whatever, because it's addictive, right? It's addictive. So what are some of the ways that we can be liberated from these types of addiction? I love what James 4, 7 says here. It says, submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And you know, you want to know a good way to resist the devil when it comes to alcohol and drug addictions? Saying no. Saying no to the call of the alcohol and the drugs. A good test would to just make yourself go two or three weeks without it, saying no, and see if you can. And if you find that you can't, then we need to have, we need to have the humility and the wisdom to maybe walk into a 12-step program like AA. Or if we live with people that have alcohol problems, Alelon. Or, or, or something like that. And it's actually a biblical thing. It's a biblical thing to seek help and to get help when we need it. We read here in Galatians 6, 7, Dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path. And be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. So we see that one of the answers here is that we help one another as a church. As we gather in this place, as a family, we support one another. We lean on each other to help us through the unclean spirit of addiction. And this leads right into the second type of unclean spirit or influence I want to discuss this morning. And that is the unclean spirit of toxic relationships, right? We read in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, do not be led astray. Bad company corrupts good morals. So in her second marriage, 
my mother was in a toxic relationship. My first stepfather was an awful alcoholic. He was verbally and physically abusive. And you could see the evidence of that in the amount of times our plaster walls had to be repaired because something went through them, right? And I remember as a kid one time, I was wondering where my mom was for a couple days. And she came home and she was all bandaged up in the head. She was messed up and, and I was digging in like, what happened? And I found out that on the way from a party, my stepdad had gotten so drunk that in the Virginia Beach tunnel, he had went head on sideswiping a car coming in the other direction. Now, luckily, he was safe and the other driver was safe too. But my mother, during those days, wasn't wearing a seatbelt. So she went through the windshield and she was in the hospital for several days. And I thank the Lord that she was able to get out of that toxic, abusive relationship. I'm thankful for that. And that's the best advice you can give anyone when they're in an abusive or toxic relationship. Get out. Get out of that relationship. I said it from the pulpit. Don't stay in an abusive, toxic relationship. It's not healthy. So how do we do that? How do we how do we counteract the toxicity and the influence of these relationships? Well, we start with prayer. We start with prayer. And then we add some boundaries between us and those people that are abusive. And then, hey, guess what? We lean on the help of a trusted, loving community where we're loved and where we're built up and not isolated by the abuser because that's what abusers like to do isolate people away from the people they love so that the abuse can continue, right? That's why I love in Hebrews 1, 24 through 25, where we read this, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. And so we see the answer to this problem once again is the help of our church family as we gather in community, as we build each other up, as we help each other through these situations and through these possibly unhealthy things, right? And then finally, I want to talk about the unclean spirit of old baggage and sin. And I think this is one we can all relate to, right? It's one thing to give up an addiction, and it's another thing to leave a toxic relationship, but it's a whole other thing to walk away from our own personal baggage, our own accumulated junk, and our own unhealthy behaviors that lead us into bad situations to begin with. That's a doozy, right? And we tend to carry those scars around with us. And boy, let me tell you, does the devil love to dig up our old baggage and put it in our face and try to discourage us? Yes, the devil will do that. Anything to get you down on yourself <laughs> and not shining Christ's light, not rising above all those things. That's why I love in Isaiah 43, 18 through 19, where we read this. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And in this context, Isaiah was talking to Israel and he was encouraging them to put the past behind them. Just let that old baggage like a suitcase drop on the ground and keep walking away from it because God is doing something new in your life. And that, is a healthy attitude to let that stuff be gone and to allow Christ to bring us into that place of cleansing from all those unclean habits and unclean baggage and all that junk. And then I've met people that say, but David, you don't understand how much I've sinned in my life. I can't just leave it behind. 
And I know what I say to that. First John 1 John 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Not just some of it, all of it, so that we can enter into that new space of healing that Christ has for our lives. So, where do we need liberation this morning? That's my question. Is it an addiction of some sort? Is it a toxic relationship in our life that we need new boundaries around? Is it, is it old baggage and unhealthy patterns of behavior that we tend to carry around with us? Whatever it is, my prayer is, in Jesus' name, let that be gone. Let it be gone in Jesus' name. And then, let's come together as a church. Let's lean on each other through those seasons when we battle unclean spirits and let's be the loving support mechanism that the Holy Spirit uses to help us into a place of healthy holiness in Christ.